All right, welcome. Good morning. Sorry about that little break there. Um, good to have you here, Paul Tranny, in the house, playing just some nice background music because we're gonna get started in Photoshop, doing Photoshop compositing. So that is the plan. Thank you so much for joining me. I can see some people joining me already on YouTube. And if you could hop on over uh, to behance.net forward slash live, that'd be fantastic. Because that is the stream that I'm watching and the chat that I'm watching as well. So, um, yeah, there we are. Marina, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Abdul, Ivan, Santi, Asaf, Mubashir, if you could jump over to behance.net forward slash live. Uh, I would love to say hello to you there and wish you a wonderful day. And let's dive into getting started in Photoshop, focusing on compositing and new features. So that is the plan. Oh yeah, I'm listening to that smooth jazz. That's good stuff. And uh, why are we doing this? Well, we have a full day this week. Essentially what we have going on is um, full, excuse me, full schedule this week, full day, all day tomorrow, uh, and Wednesday as well as Thursday. So we have Aaron Nace, Flurn or Photoshop Learn. Uh, of Photoshop Learn fame. He will be with us 9 to 10.30 tomorrow. Really exciting. So again, all Photoshop pros. Ted Chin, I'm going to talk about his contest. Alexandria Lenz, three fantastic Photoshop compositors. I know you're going to learn a lot from them, and I'm really excited about this week. So Eric, good to see you, buddy. And hello, Thomas from Germany, where it's 6 p.m. So good afternoon to you. Uh, so yeah, I will be with uh, Aaron and Alexandria Alexandria Voodoo Vowel Butte, Ted Chin. So um, speaking of Ted Chin and Photoshop compositing, I want to share my screen uh, and just so you can see uh, the challenge that's happening. So hello from Milan, Anika, good to have you here. Uh, awesome, Owen is in the house, cool. Uh, Glaucia, yes sir, jump over to behance.net forward slash live if you could. Uh, but basically, there's this little dream design challenge, okay? And I can uh, post this link to chat. Um, but basically, uh, this is on Adobe's blog. So um, the little dream design challenge is basically all about using Photoshop to make your own dream world, okay? So that's the... Uh, that's the idea. So you can see how to use these new tools that I'm going to cover. So a content aware fill, of course, live blend mode, select and mask, which is essential to creating your a dream world. And this is the little dream design challenge. Okay, so I'm going to use those tools to make something magical like Ted is doing here. And uh, that is the goal. So that's what you need to do. Uh, check out, I'll get this posted here in a second. And uh, hold on. All right. Yeah, good times. Good times, everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Give me one second. Well, I will I will get that posted shortly. Um, and uh, yeah, that is the plan. Uh, but basically you can find it out there on, Ado on Adobe's blog. That's where you'll find it. But let's kind of dive into this. Typically, where are you going to get images? There's a number of places you can get images and a number of places, ways we can start thinking about this content, uh, which is about just a, creating a dream world. Okay, so that's what I want to do right now. And uh, kind of what I'm thinking is I actually just kind of grabbed some cool images since it's a world and grab some cool, I don't know, these are, this is probably like in... Uh, you know, Ireland, I would assume, someplace like that. But I've just kind of pulled down some images and I got them mostly from Adobe Stock. So I encourage you to jump out there and just like, escapes, just doing a search on beautiful landscapes is all I would literally do, okay? So, yeah, if a nightmare is your, yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about in chat, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you know, your dream world can be whatever you want it to be, 
All right, it's totally up to you because it is your dream world. So you could start with some of these. I've already licensed some of them and I'm just saving them uh, to my uh, Creative Cloud folder or file, a Creative Cloud, uh, Creative Cloud Files folder. So as I do that, I'm saving those. And by all means, you can use the preview images. So you can save previews to your Creative Cloud Libraries specific folder in this case, as I just make sure this is refreshed, I could save them right in here and we'll see them pop up. All right, so these are the ones that I've just synced and we'll see them load in, but I'm just giving us a place to start. Thank you, Adriano Silva, for posting that link. I'm sorry, Behance was asking me to log in and all this stuff, so thank you so much for helping me out. So, uh, and please check the terms and conditions because there might be certain terms and conditions that you have to adhere to. Like uh, for, for what I'm doing, I'm gonna be using just Adobe Stock. I encourage you to actually use your own images because you know you have the rights for all of those. Bojana? Good to have you here. Cheers to you. I'm going to go ahead and give you a toast with, with a dream world, you could say right here, Van Gogh Starry Night. And that, I would say, is a dream world as well. Here we are. I've made this larger. I'll go into the canvas size. And uh, you could see I have it as a perfect square because I'm going to post this to Instagram and uh, to Twitter and different social media platforms because that's what the contest calls for, as you can see right over here, okay? So I'm gonna make sure I adhere to the terms and conditions. I'm doing what's asked of me. I'm gonna use these three features in making a dream world, uh, using those hashtags as well. And again, you can post on Instagram, Twitter, or Behance. And I would just say, and Behance, post all of them. And you have seven days to do that. So you have a whole week. So this is what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm realizing is this photo is long, okay? It's not, it needs to be taller, right? I want to actually stretch it out. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to, this is what I typically do. Really easy to do. I'm just going to grab or use the selection tool to select this sort of top strip of the sky because I want to extend it out. And uh, what you can do is you could do a content aware scale, okay? This will sometimes help you. Anytime you need to scale something up, use content aware scale. In fact, let me show you what happens with content aware scale if I do it to the whole image. Content aware scale. It's gonna be aware of the content. I'm gonna hold down the shift key. And look, it stretches out the sky and the mountains a little bit because I'm getting really exaggerated, but look, it doesn't stretch out, and let me move this up a little. It doesn't stretch out uh, all this detail. So it's not gonna distort a lot of the shapes, but will start, start to duplicate pixels where necessary. So I can grab that, oh, I could use that and holding down the shift key, extend that up kind of like that, okay? So again, you use content aware skill. I think it was one of the first content aware tools. Uh, there's probably, I don't even know if Content Aware Fill was out at the time. But uh, anyways, Content Aware Scale is what I'm using. Also, I would just grab this and do a Command T to transform it. And what happens if you don't hold down Shift? This is in Photoshop CC 2019. Everything is going to scale proportionately, right? So the proportions are locked on it, okay? In this case, I wanna extend it up, so I wanna distort it, so I'm holding down the shift key. Holding down the shift key and just kinda of stretching that up. I'm not worried too much about the sky. I can blend another sky in with it and uh, you know, get that working just fine. The nice thing is, is the fantasy world, it doesn't really have to adhere to any certain uh, rules that we might have, so. Oh, Tim, you were funny. Content aware fills coffee. Oh, if that only existed. That's what I do every morning is content aware fill me with coffee. Fill me with fills. All right. So what I'm thinking is I actually want to do kind of like a, uh, like a, like I want to have fish and like turtles and stuff like that in the sky. Right, and I wanna have people riding on animals like, excuse me, like uh, 
aquatic animals, if you will, or fish. I want people riding on those, and that's how you get around, is you get around by riding on a fish <laughs> or something, right? So, because I, I, this is blue, I'm thinking, oh, it would be cool to put some fish up here. So we're gonna do that right now, or a sea turtle. This is actually what I have. I have a sea turtle right here. I wanna cut this out, check this out. Using the selection tool, going up to the top here, select an, oh, not right there, sorry. Unlocking it. Ooh, I'm glad you are watching this because uh, you need to make sure your content is just unlocked. That layer, you just click on that background layer. If it's a JPEG, it's going to be locked. And then you can begin to work on it, okay? Uh, now, typically, I would maybe come over here and say, hey, use the uh, quick selection tool or the magic wand tool and try to select these pixels, right? Just by clicking and dragging. But what I want to do instead is with that same tool selected right up here at the top, select subject. Okay, so Ash, hopefully you know about this. Boom, select subject. I have not done this. Ooh, I'm always impressed. I, I'm really gutsy because I don't, <laughs> I'm not always testing out these files because I want, this needs to be a real world experience. I didn't know how this was going to come out and it came out perfect. I just love this. It selected this. Sure enough, this turtle. What do I want to do with this turtle? Cut it out. So in this case, I want to do a select and mask. Okay, so right up here, select and mask. And you can see it looks pretty good. There's not a lot of cleanup I need to do. I'm going to do more cleanup later using the refine edge brush tool. But mainly all I'm going to do is I'm going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask right down here at the bottom see that new layer with layer mask right because that's really what i ultimately want clicking ok it creates the fancy new layer with the layer mask and now i can bring that in to the other file okay so i usually just move this over dropping it right in there right looks good to me don't even need to save that one so we're cutting out uh, certain objects. We're just gonna have fun. Here's another case, super easy to do. Um, this'll be a little more tricky actually. I'm gonna go into select, and in this case, if I want to select a specific color, in this case black, I could try color range. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what happens when I select color range, it's gonna select the black, <clears throat> excuse me, increase or decrease the fuzziness, but it's gonna get some of this black probably on this guy and right over here, it's gonna think maybe some of this is black, so I'll click okay, and it sure enough does get some of that. So it's not necessarily the best because I really just wanna get this t contiguous black around all of these different um, fish. So that's where maybe I wanna use the magic wand tool. So typically when I use the magic wand tool, the same thing will happen as I click it's gonna get inside there, right? So I encourage you to turn on this option right up at the top. Turn on contiguous, sample contiguous pixels only. Okay, with that done, click. I've sampled all those contiguous pixels. It's not gonna get inside anywhere. Uh, and by the way, I can adjust the tolerance as well. Okay, from there I could say invert the, command shift I will invert the selection. <clears throat> right down here at the bottom that's right i'm going to click this little mask button so i have this selection and it's automatically going to turn that selection into a mask why do i want to use masks is because it's going to take out everything but it's not going to delete the pixels it's not going to delete that back black so there it is right there i could still use select and mask for something like this if that works for you uh uh, I'm going to go into select and mask, which I can actually do that with the properties panel off to the side. I encourage you to just, this is what you're going to end up using because you have certain controls that you can do right in here in the properties panel with this mask. But as I notice, all of these have that black edge around them. Well, I can go into select and mask and, you know, let's work on that fine detail. Let's change the color to say, for instance, white so we can really see it. And let's start to say shift the edge if we want to. So, uh, in fact, we're gonna subtract from that edge. Maybe adjust the radius. 
but see how it's actually it's getting rid of a lot of that black and really helps with the cleanup and again i need to do this with a, a another like per, a person say with hair i need this is great for hair but i could use uh, this tool right here refine edge brush tool i can come in down here and maybe hold down the option key to subtract from that specific selection it'll start removing some of that some of that black right here so you notice how i have the same issue right here in this spot i gotta fix that don't i yes i do let's go in and just paint so using the brush tool coming over here we can add or subtract and all i'm doing is just painting over those parts that i need okay so this is selected mask you get the idea uh oh yon eric you're too kind i hope i can help you out really <clears throat> yeah so adriano silva i'm gonna show you more magic because right now we're dealing with sort of removing images removing the background from images that's really the goal here right and then we'll start compositing it all together right so here i have this let's bring all these little fishies over here this is gonna be really fun don't even need that anymore Goodbye, I don't... Uh, oh, here's another one. I use this. It just went out to... Uh, out here to Adobe Stock and just searched for, you know, woman on a swing standing. You know, that's what I wanted. And that's what came up. And that's what I brought right into... Sure enough, she's right here. Into Photoshop. This is another good case that's getting even more complex, right? Wouldn't you say? I'd love to know how some of you would do this right i would love to know how you do this let's skip this song oh yeah it's called this song's called sunrise by dj pac-man all right this gets a little more interesting right first of all you would think there's my maybe not a magic bullet out there but i'm actually going to try the magic bullet which is again select subject let's just see what happens click and just roll roll that dice there's not much in the background but her dress is so close to the background i'm still really impressed with this right it looks really good and i can come in here and i can refine some of these some of these points around keep in mind i still have whoop let me zoom out i still have this the magic wand tool selected or i'll use the i actually have been using the quick selection tool a lot but right over here let's you know add to it just like that and clean up hold down the option key to remove do a little clean up oh see look it this whole part needs to i need to get it Okay, I need to add to, so I'm holding down the plus key. I'm holding down the option key. Watch what happens when I do this. Shift key adds to. Holding down the option key gives me, um, gosh, what do you call this? The la bit kind of like a lasso tool, but basically allows me to define these points, right? So hold down that option key when you have uh, the lasso tool selected and you're able to grab what you need. And I'm just clicking and dragging and go up here bop 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 and that looks pretty good let's extract her the great thing is, is we could always fix this later but the immediate issues i definitely can take care of right now and that's what i'm going to do quick selection tool making the brush smaller for the quick selection tool by pressing the opening bracket and i'm just selecting that rope all the way down so i encourage you to start this way uh, select the quick selection tool go up to your options bar and do select subject bam that'll get you 80 percent of the way there and then look at the image and see what you need to do because it's going to be a combination of maybe the quick selection tool and the lasso tool uh and those type of tools but this is looking pretty good hopefully everybody's doing well good you have it here ricardo <clears throat> wait uh what is this 
Oh, some graphic design work with uh, examples of what Paul's doing. Okay, cool. I guess there's, I, I know this isn't a new idea, by the way. Like, hey, we're going to put, <laughs> we're going to put, uh, you know, fish in the sky. Oh, the sky's blue. Oh, the water's blue. Yeah, it's not an original. It's not that original of a thought. Or, or I don't know what you're talking about. But either way, that's what we're going to do. Super easy. And from this point, what I do is go from select subject to select and mask. Bop. And you can see that it's extracted her. I typically change the color of the background and see what needs to be worked on. Right now she's going to fall because this rope broke right here. Right? So we can use that paintbrush to kind of come in here and grab it if we want to. Oops. Right? A lot of those same tools. Oh, polygonal lasso tool. That's what you switch to when you hold down the option key. You're switching to the polygonal lasso tool. Okay. Uh, we're going to grab this hair. So check this out using the refine edge brush tool coming in here. I want to remove. So I'm going to hold down and do a minus and just ru just kind of scrub right over that part of her hair. Actually, I take that back. We need to add to that selection. You don't need to hold down the option key. But look at this. Let's like get this hair. Let's get this background in here. Ba -ba -ba. Get it, get that, get it. Get that background. And again, this is in anticipation of this week where we have a Photoshop week all about Photoshop compositing. We have some fantastic individuals. Uh, joining us this week right here on Behance.net forward slash live. Uh, uh, Asaf, how you doing, buddy? All right. I would love to watch the YouTube chat, but I can only focus on the Behance one right now. So, yeah, what about the hair? Got the hair. Afroja, are we good, my friend, my new Facebook friend? All right, I think we got it. Right, and again, this is all going to be pretty small, so I'm not really going to sweat it too much. But I'd say this is pretty good for what we're trying to do. Clicking OK. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, let's go back in there. Go back into Selected Mask. Right down here at the bottom. Zoop. Output to a new layer with a layer mask. Boom. And you know what? Let's just remember these settings because I always pick that. Click OK. There it is, my new layer with my layer mask. And I would say most of Photoshop is selecting things. And you can see we're able to select her just fine. Cool. All right. I have like three drinks over here. Make sure you're drinking lots of water today good for you but keep in mind you're not a fish all right so we will take this turtle and fish and woman and we can get some other people to ride on their backs and stuff different things like that um let's take her let's get this let's focus on this turtle I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to be a rebel. This is one thing you can do, and I don't know if many people do this, but I, I want to try to keep this nice and clean uh, somewhat. So I'm actually going to create a new layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to do something like this is just going to be like backup assets. And I'm just putting that in a folder. This is everything with the layer masks, right? Because I am I just don't want the layer mask right now. I'm just going to start applying them. All right. I personally don't care if you're naming your layers. If you get the job done without it, hey, good on you. Let's take this turtle, Command T, stretching it out, not holding down the um, 
shift key anymore, stretch that out. This is also another pro tip. If you right click on something while you're transforming it, you'll see right down here, you'll have the controls to flip it. Cause I want to flip this uh, sea turtle. So it's going the other direction, flip horizontal, boom, right? Adjust maybe like that, just like that. Okay. Taking this woman, moving her down. Why not? Why not make some fun fantasy land where animals are get to take you around? Uh, I think I will turn her into a smart object. The reason, why would you do a smart object, Brienne? Or Afroja? Yeah, destructive editing. Ah, I get it. You know what? Get over it. I also know what I'm doing, all right? And I know I'm not going to need those black pixels anymore, okay? So yes, it was destructive. But right now, I want to get into non-destructive. So Jan Eric, you should appreciate this now, right? So convert to smart object, boom. Because what I want to do, I know I want to shrink her down. But I also know I might need to scale her back up. So that's why I turned on or made it a uh, smart object, as you can see, has this little thing that says, hey, I'm smart. That's what that is right there. Right, bring that down, kind of like that. We need to extend out this rope. I'm just gonna make this happen. You could just watch me if you want to, but I'm gonna get some things done. I gotta pay the bills. The client wants it ASAP. So get to work, Paul. They're like, hey, where's our lady on the, where's the lady on the sea turtle? We need her stat. I'm like, okay, I'm getting to it now. Okay, here I have some ropes. Way more rope than I need, All right? I don't need this, I don't need all this rope. So much rope I can do a lot of work with it. All right, so, like this. Maybe I'm gonna put this like as a knot up here at the top. Okay, so that's a great idea taking out this chunk, just work with me, working in Photoshop, doing selections. You know how this goes, hopefully. Uh, you wanna move the selection of something. There we go, uh, it took me a while, command key. And then you're just moving what is up, what is selected. But right here, this is where we're gonna have the knot. This part, let's cut this, let's move it over here. Let's make it twice its size. I know it's hard to see because we have that. Moving that over, maybe we'll make it a little longer. Zoop. Kinda like that. And rotating this over, let's do this. Let's do this dance. Okay, we wanna wrap this around. How would we do this? We need to wrap this rope. I know it's hard to see. Let's maybe make this turtle a little transparent. I need to wrap that rope around its um, fin. So selecting that layer, going up to edit, going right down here to uh, Puppet Warp. Puppet Warp allows me to put pins in it. And let's turn this on, right? Right up here and then make sure this is turned on, but it now gives me this grid. So now I can put some pins in it. Bam, 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 bam. Bend it, zoop, 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 boop, like that. You get the idea. The rope is a little long, but we're just gonna make sure it kind of contours to this, uh, there we go, kind of like that. I think that's all it needs. It needs to connect right there. Yeah, that's it. Hit enter. Maybe chop off the end here just to make it looks like it's wrapping around. We don't need to get too crazy with it but we will get crazy with this part as well, right? 
edit. Puppet Warp. Your new best friend. Love Puppet Warp. Whoop. Just need to curve that over just ever so much. Ever so slightly. Just like that. And then maybe chop off the end right there. Okay. Uh, we need to give the illusion of depth. I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers. I'm going to make this content. I'm going to bring up the turtle. Zoop. Work on some lighting here. Right. So here's, here's that part of the rope. Gets a little funky right here, probably messed it up. But this is gonna be so small, I'm not really gonna worry about it too much. Right, there it is, done, boom, boom, up. See, that's, that's why, yeah. All right, so, rope, make it darker. How do you make it darker? What would you do here? I know some of you know. Probably go in and use the sort of traditional dodge and burn tools, right? Burn right here. It looks a little abusive. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to tell you. Keep in mind, this is a fantasy world. Is it a little too tight? Is that what you're saying? Maybe it's a little tight. But just making that a little bit darker because it's going to be darker underneath that uh, turtle. Okay. <laughs> just like that. Okay. So bring it up. We have the turtle. We have the woman. We have the rope. Zoop. Bring it up. Lighting. Lighting is huge. And now I'm going to... I'm gonna actually bring in some of these other little fish just for fun because lighting's gonna play a big part with these fish as well. So let's just take each one of these, cut it, right? Cutting them out. And then I'll see which ones. And believe me, like be prepared to make mistakes, find what works, what doesn't. I think a lot of times with even live streams, we, we have it planned out. We probably did it already. In fact, guess what I did? Look, boop, but don't uh, worry about making mistakes or anything. But this is kind of the, at least a, a current version that I'm working on, right? So this lighting, so you can see from here to here, kind of the difference, right? And I think what this one needs is it needs some other little uh, fish around it that are kind of flying in the sky as well. Okay, so that's what I'm going for. Let's bring some other little little fishies. And maybe they're beta fish like what I have here. Maybe there's something else. But uh, I'm just giving myself something to start with. Because they might just be too decorative is my concern. Some of these don't even look like fish. So we'll just eliminate. They're too pretty. They're way too pretty. Uh, so again, if you're just joining me, I'm just doing some Photoshop compositing. And uh, what's happening is I'm trying to enter this contest that you need to enter yourself into this little dream design challenge, right? So basically make your own little fantasy world uh, using uh, really all these techniques that you typically use if you're doing any sort of fantastical composite. It's called the little dream design challenge, okay? So what would your little dream look like? Okay, so just create something. I'm actually creating something that's square, that's Instagram size, that I then post as well. The thing is, I can't win. I work for Adobe. There's no way I'm gonna win. It's up to you. Uh, make sure you check out the terms and conditions. Make sure you have all the rights for the photos that you're using, like that's another thing. I don't want anybody getting in trouble. So make sure you read the terms and conditions and understand um, the <clears throat> your what you have the rights to. Let's fix that. Little mask right there. Invert it. Boop. And this is bothering me too. Let's mask that as well. Oh, wrong one. There we are. I just had to delete it. All right, so uh, Saddam, thank you so much for joining me and joining us. You're here with like, like myself, Paul, uh, and Eric, and Mohammed, Ricardo, a bunch of smart people, people that are smarter than me. Um, 
but we're going to get it done. I have so much to do. My mind is racing. I think what I need as I'm looking at this, I'm going to go out to Adobe Stock and search for fish on white. So if you know you're going to make some fantastical world, think about just searching for something on white and then you can literally, um, you know, cut it out much easier, obviously. Look at all these fishies. Look at that. That's all for like one credit? Like, yeah. S yes. License. Accept. Just like that. <sighs> yeah, right. <laughs> I do not need to win. I, I win. If you're successful, then that like makes me feel really good. So that's my goal is to, to make you successful is my goal. But look at all these fish. Like you just need to, you know, if you're going to be in the industry a while, just like get that one picture of a, of fish and you'll just, you'll be using it for years. But just, I like using Adobe stock cause I trust, I know everybody has, you know, has given me the rights and I'm searching for royalty free photos right? I'm not reselling them. I'm just really like, I'm on this kick about um, making sure you definitely have rights to the stuff you're using. Because otherwise it's, you feel like you're just stealing from like one of your coworkers. Because we have, I have coworkers that submit to, to uh, Adobe stock. So don't steal. Let's do a school of fish on white. Yes, even fish have to go to school. Yep. I mean, how else are they going to learn how to swim, huh? Look at that. These are cool. Uh, you can also get into more advanced features for filtering out because I want to just use photos. Some new ones are right down here. Uh, vivid color, uh, depth of field, and uh, images with copy space. So that's brand new as well. All right. I'm kind of lazy, so I'm, I'm just looking for something that might work for me. Ooh, these are kind of nice. And by the way, you don't have to actually license them. You could just save a preview like I'm doing now because I might use those fish right there. Yeah. Still kind of thinking through this whole design. So apologize as my brain works. As I get a little quiet. I like this one. Let's get a couple. Again, it doesn't cost anything to get previews. This one. That's the one I think I'm going to use is right there. Anyways, let's just go back over here. Let's see what we have. Let's make sure these gets loaded up. Saving a preview to my CC library. They should pop up right here any second. And again, you can see that they're sinking right down here. Boop, there they are. So again, I might just try a couple of things. All right, let's move on. Let's do this. A uh, little shortcut, how do you select things? I'm curious, Jan Eric and Brian or Abdul or Asaf, how do you uh, how do you select things? Do you use layers over here, right? A lot of times they'll use layers. Sometimes I don't know what it is in the layers panel. Like I wanna select this fish right here. I don't know which one it is, right? Well, what you can do is with your selection tool, right, selected, what you can do is you hold down the command key and that will automatically select a group as you click on it. So that's what I'm doing when I, you know, hopefully, let me zoom in on this. This is what I do. I hold down the command key, but it turns it on. It, it toggles it on, right? So I typically have it turned off. And then when I need to use it, command key, click. And now I know it's this layer two over here. 
oops. Right, and that's why I typically toggle it because otherwise I accidentally move around the background. But let's make that one bigger, let's select this one, let's make it a little larger. I don't know, something like that. Actually, this is wrong, like, I, I don't, I guess it doesn't have to be realistic, but there's no way these betta fish would be this large compared to that turtle, okay? But I think right now, as I start to size things, this is another thing I would do, start to convert everything to a smart object. Protect those pixels. Jan Eric is watching. He's like, protect the pixels. That's what this does. It says, hey, you know what? I'm putting them in a little Photoshop file that you can't hurt, right? So now you can make them larger or smaller and it's not gonna be a big deal, right? So that's what I'll do. Bump, bump. I don't know, it all kind of needs work. Maybe we'll do some overlapping like that. You know, something. I just, I, it needs some work and that's why I grabbed these other images. Let's drop in this image, scaling it up, right? Let's play with some layer modes. You ready for this? Love this. Diving into this, cause just referencing our guide of everything I'm gonna cover. I'm covering content aware fill, right? I've kind of been using that. We've been using a lot of select and mask, but now we're gonna dive into live blend mode. Okay, so for this school of fish, selecting that layer, you know what, to heck with it. I'm gonna license it. I'm licensing it. Because I want you to experience the full, the image in its, in its full glory, in all of its glory. <laughs> all right. Let me know how everybody's doing. Feel free to share this. Uh, feel free to follow me on the Instagrams and the stuff. It's P-T-R-A-N-I. By the way, can I just do, make a quick sidebar? Since you're uploading this to Instagram, I encourage you to, like, first of all, it's not an Adobe product, right? But it's this little tool right here. It's called Windowed. So what it does is it gives you Instagram in a little window on your desktop. So since you have to post this to Instagram, this allows you to publish or post images directly from your desktop, right? It's like that. So uh, I encourage you to use it. It's called Windowed. And I also encourage you to follow me. How do I get rid of that URL? There we are. P-T-R-A-N-I at adobe.com. Or, uh, yeah. All right. Let's go back over. I've licensed that image. Guess what, it's in Photoshop. And it is licensed, you can see it right here, licensed. Notice how it swaps it out automatically. And here's the full res version that I can play with. Let's play with the blend modes now, ready? Changing from normal, this is live blend modes. Rolling over each one, you can see how I don't have to actually click and switch. As I roll over it, it automatically changes to that uh, layer blend mode, okay? So, that's what I'm doing right now. This is what you do, you just kind of roll through these. I like lighten, screen. What I love about this is that my focus is on the image and not on this little, you know, pop up or drop down list off to the side. I like lighten, I like soft light. Anyway, so let's just go with soft light. Where's our turtle? There's our turtle. There's our woman. <laughs> All right. That's the problem. It's the size of these fish compared to everything else. I think that's the problem. All right. Flip horizontal. Did this earlier as well, just using magic wand tool. Make sure it's set to contiguous. First of all, I'll turn that off. Make sure I'm on the magic wand tool. Contiguous right at the top. 
clicking once. Yeah, let's just delete. And now we have all these little fishies that I can work with. This is what it takes to get the job done. Another thing for hacking, not really hacking, but you want to tweak Photoshop to uh, work the way you want to work. Because right now, for this layer off to the side, I have, like, it is so hard to see what some of this stuff is. Like, what is this? I don't know, layer two, copy two, right? Especially when it's set like this. Let me show you, because your uh, layer panel options might look different. Um, entire document, that how it, this is how it might look. You're like, I have no idea what these little dots are. Like, what are those? Well, guess what? You go into your flyout menu, go down to panel options at the very bottom, selecting panel options, and you can see right in here, you wanna select layer bounds. So rather than having the entire document, select layer bounds, click okay. Oh, I can see that you're actually fish. So set that up, that's gonna help out a ton, right? And let's just have these fun fish. I love the color of this one is like a lot better, right? Maybe this one's at an angle, right? These ones I wanna use. We have definitely some color issues we need to work out, which is gonna be huge. If you're gonna be making your own world, since they're in your, their own little world, all like in one world, uh, the colors just need to match up right? They just have to. And as you start compositing, the lighting is going to be different for sure. The contrast, because look at how washed out these two look compared to these two fish. So I definitely need to do some color correction. So let's get into that right now since I have these fish in here, right? And really I should wait for me to have more, <laughs> you know, more content in here. I should have a final layout before I actually start to mess with the uh, mess with the various uh, for the color of this. But I want to get to it because I'm only going to go for a little bit longer. Oh shoot! I did not. I'm losing track of time. I love it. Let's do this right now. You ready, everyone? We're gonna, we're gonna make the colors match and all that good stuff. First off, for this turtle, the woman needs help, the turtle needs help. Look at, I look at the lighting of the background. Look, see that lighting right there? That bright lighting, I need to make sure that sunlight is hitting that turtle on those various sides. So I'll select the turtle. What I can do is I can go in here to the burn tool, adjusting the brush size, burning sort of this side, making this darker, right? See what it's doing? It's bringing in that contrast. I have it set to shadows, right? So I could just start kind of burning this side, making it darker, okay? Like that. Just on those two sides, let's undo that. By the way, there's multiple undos in Photoshop CC 2019 as well. But I just kind of adjusting contrast. Might be a little intense there, right? I can even sort of add a little more contrast to the backgrounds. Don't worry, it's all gonna work, it's all gonna work. Okay, same thing for her. Like, she's sticking out a lot. Let's just merge these two layers. That's right, I'm being a rebel. Let's just do overall levels for her, right? Overall levels for the woman and kind of adjusting accordingly. But I do the same thing as come in here and say, hey, you know what, the lighting is from the other side. Let's burn one side and dodge the other, right? So burn one side, like this side of her face, and then switch it to dodge, and maybe you wanna do midtones or highlights, and dodge or add highlights to the other side where the light's coming from. There's more we're gonna do in here as well, right? Remember, it's gonna hit the front of her legs, something like that, just adding that brightness to this side, right? That's what we would do. Another thing that I would do as well is take those colors, right? Yeah, man, that's so much I want to do right now. Yes, undo updates so nice. It's been a long time coming, I agree. I'm going to duplicate this turtle. This is what I do. I duplicate this turtle. I would do a hue. I'd colorize this turtle. I'd crank it up. I would get this to match this down here just by colorizing the turtle, right? Cranking that up. 
cranking up the brightness. So now I have two copies, one on top of the other. For the one on the top, I'm gonna to start subtracting from it. So I'm gonna paint in black with the brush. And I gotta, actually let's invert this. Selecting it all, filling with black, right? And now I'm gonna paint on white. Right over here, zoop, paint, increasing the opacity and painting. Cause I'd wanna get, I potentially wanna try to get like that bright edge kind of coming from I want to get that gold basically. I'm getting a splash of that gold from the from this side of the photo. And I would do the same thing for her. And even for this little fishy that's clear out here. Hey little buddy. And this one. What you doing out there, buddy? Let's move you down. But this one right here, you know again, could just be cranked up, colorized a little more. Let's just crank it up. See what happens. But I would usually add a dash of orange to him as well to make him match and maybe even adjust the opacity like that. That opacity works out a little bit. But again, this is all part of the game that we're playing to get this to look right. In fact, I think I'm just gonna focus on a couple of these fish. Like that. Last tip, you ready for this? It is 10.51 Mountain Time, 9.51 Pacific Time. Uh, and again, I just, I just kind of just got into this. I just, I need to make part of this cooler, part of this warmer. I definitely need to throw some yellow onto her. Let's just do this. Wait for it, flip it back, paint with the paintbrush. Paint in some bright yellow, just to like, there's that yellow that's kind of coming through. Like this is what it's all about. Just adding, it needs to be really strong. I'll probably even make it white. But see how there's that bright white or that bright sort of gold that I'm adding? Just like that. See, that's what I'm talking about. Give that just a splash of color like that. Last tip, you ready for this? This is gonna be huge. Colorize, oh, cancel. Colorizing the whole photo. And let me just reference everything that uh, I was covering. Content aware fill, kind of talked about that in the beginning. Live blend mode, select and mask. Now I'm gonna give your uh, fun world an overall look and feel. Go right down here and you wanna go to, um, I want to go to a uh, photo, f I'm drawing a color lookup right here. This is what I want to go to. This is what I use, color lookup. I encourage you to try this. Uh, selecting color lookup, making sure it's at the top. It's this new layer and it allows you to apply lookup tables. So let's just kind of go through these. Boom, already, already this looks better. If you give it uh, an overall, uh, whether it's a, a gradient color, look but even this color lookup looks a lot better and this is probably what i'm going to go with but i encourage you to use color lookups lookup tables as they're known and it's going to just make all your colors consistent in your entire photo you know because a lot of these photos were taken from different cameras what this does is says hey you know what let's pretend or give this whole thing the look of the uh fuji 3510 look just like that so you'd select that and notice how it gives everything that pop so that looks good too it looks like it, it makes it look like it's all shot from the same camera okay so that's roughly what's happening but i really like the first one to be honest with you let's go teal orange tension green oh interesting i like the two strip look this is what i'm gonna do this is what I'm saving out right now. It needs more work, but again, hopefully you got a good idea of how to use Photoshop when it comes to compositing and uh, using really a lot of the new features in Photoshop CC uh, 2019. Uh, last thing, don't forget, just hit save out a JPEG if you could. 
I'm just gonna save it to my desktop, right? Boom, it's called, I'm calling it SeaWorld, right? You get it. And then just posting using this fancy new tool. It's just called Windowed. It's not an Adobe product, but allows you to upload from your desktop like that to Instagram. It's my first time using it actually. Somebody told me about it last week and I was like, this is awesome. So there it is. And just like that, I encourage you to enter this contest and I will post a link in chat in a second. That's on behance.net forward slash live. But that's what you want to do is post here. PST PST little dream contest. There you are. All right. So, uh, yeah, please follow me, P-T-R-A-N-I, on Instagram, and feel free to give me your feedback. I'm just happy that you're here with me today, and I'm really happy with our amazing guests that we have this week. Uh, and that's what I'm going to actually leave you with are these fantastic people. The deadline is December 10th. And by all means, go through the terms and conditions. Make sure you qualify. I got to make sure your country qualifies. Make sure you qualify as an individual. Make sure you're using photos that uh, that you have the right to use and all that. Uh, is it over? Yes, Ga Ga Gaussi Gun, I just ended. I've gone for about an hour. Oh, it was a waste of time. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry my free content uh, didn't work out for you since you paid so much for it. I apologize. But anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me, everybody. Hopefully you appreciated this. Looks like Ricardo does. Thank you so much. And uh, again, join us 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. More Photoshop, magic, and all that good stuff. So hang with us. I do appreciate you. Appreciate everybody. Remember, spread the love. Call your mom. Drink lots of water. Uh, leave good comments for people. Be positive in the world. Be that, that voice of positivity. And uh, that's it. By all means, you can watch this later as well. It's available on the replays tab. And don't forget about the schedule tab. So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, tune in with me tomorrow. I'll be with Aaron Nace. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see ya.